All right. So I wanted to come on here because um, it looks like the GOP holdouts that were rebelling against uh, Kevin McCarthy aren't just, you know, they weren't just kidding around. Like, oh, just give us these concessions and all of that. And, and, and all of that. Well, uh, ac- according to a lot of reports, they weren't effing around. They aren't, fo- they, they ain't kidding. They ain't kidding around. By the way, if I have, if my, is my kitty back here? Hold on, let me. Hello. Hi. Yes, I'm good. That is my kitty. You see back there, that is Nala. She's a cute, cute kitty. Oh, she's a kitty. Everyone say hello to Nala in the comments. She's, a, I think she's a Calico, Comico cat. I don't remember remember how you say it, but she's a good she's a cute good cute little kitty so <laughs> she decided to still sleep in my bed and make a make a scene uh make herself seen on a podcast so uh a political podcast so um these uh gop holdouts are really uh really demanding cuts to the military so <clears throat> these these uh ladies and gentlemen are uh, these representatives these congress people are demanding at least 75 billion dollars to to a cu- uh, uh, in cuts to the military budget. Now, just a fact: from 2004, in 2004 uh, to 2011, it, during the Iraq War, so 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, the military budget was 400, uh, 400 billion dollars. Then in 2011, it switched to 752 billion dollars. Now it's at over 800 billion dollars. 800 billion dollars. 800 billion dollars. So the question I want to ask is, are we in war? Sabby Sab said this on a, a couple shows, including Jimmy Dore Show and with Glenn Greenwald. And no, I'm not just a Jimmy Dore fanboy. I know people are you because they're ignoring the arguments. So, uh, so are we at war? Is that what is that what our country is trying to say? Okay, because because I want to know why we're spending 800 billion dollars. We literally spend. 10,000 times more than most countries combined. Then the top, the next 10 biggest world superpowers, Britain, France, Russia, China, um, you know, all, all, everybody, right? Germany. Um, they, uh, they all spend less than we do. They all do. So anyway, uh, they're not only calling for $75 billion in cuts. They have a history of doing this. For example, uh, Biggs, Roy, uh, Gosar, um, Gates, Bover, all of these guys have partnered, when progressives have done the right thing, with people like Jamal Bowman, uh, who the one, I guess, okay thing or good thing that he's done is he has basically forced the White House to actually ask for congressional approval to keep occupying a third of Syria. For those that don't know, we're actually occupying a third of Syria, uh, by the way, for the oil. We're occupying the, uh, part, the part of Syria that has the oil. And for 30 years now, the U.S. has been actively trying to overthrow the um, uh, control. They've been trying to uh, take down the government of Bashar al-Assad. So uh, we have such incompetent leaders that uh, they, they are... They can't even take down the government of Assad. Okay, not that I'm advocating for a regime change war. I'm just saying they're just incompetent idiots. The dirty war started uh, by this uh, because of the CIA, by the CIA in 2008. Then Obama came in because they couldn't have a Republican do it because then the West wouldn't want to do it. So they came in, Obama came in, continued the war in Syria, and there you go. Uh... And they're trying to overthrow Assad, who helped us fight ISIS, by the way. So that's incredible. So these uh, Democrats, including AOC, Ted Lieu, Lee, um, and others, uh, so these progressives banded together with these uh, Republicans that are now holdouts and rebels, Gates, Biggs, all of these guys, Bover. Uh, and in 2019, they partnered up to uh endorsed trump's withdrawal from syria so trump ordered withdrawal of troops from syria uh and they said okay yeah let's do that but trump's generals all said (laughs) hey everybody he was just joking get back to work fuck him get get back to fucking work come on don't, don't fuck around here 
So they dis- so it's not that the commander in chief is a commander in chief. No, it's the security state because they weren't ready to end a war. So uh, they've done a couple other good things. Um, I'm hoping that they now right now what you have is just these holdouts, these GOP holdouts, or now rebels because Kevin McCarthy speaker now that are demanding these cuts in the military. Where are the Democrats? Where? Where? Where are the Democrats? I want to know. I'm deadly serious. Because as far as I know, I don't see any Democrats uh, sitting here demanding any any change, demanding a cut to the military budget. Uh, Bernie Sanders was going to bring a, a resolution to end the war in Yemen, and then he cucked to Joe Biden. Because Bernie Sanders is a sellout. Bernie Sanders is a cuck. Bernie Sanders is a fraud. Bernie Sanders is a sellout. He's a sellout, and we know it, and he knows it, and uh, he he's, you know, he listens to Joe Biden instead of his progressive movement he abandoned. So these Democrats, these progressives aren't, re- aren't fighting for cuts to the war budget and a stop to uh, war funding and fighting and, and, and war fighting. This used to be the left position. The left used to be the anti-war, defund the, the, the military, not defund it, but lower the funding of the military. Because I know some people, oh, we didn't fund the military. They used to be the anti-war voices in the Congress, in the government. But now it's these right-wingers. Amazing. Amazing. It's, it's these right. So these right wingers are the ones that are trying to end this war. And because it's the Republicans saying, hey, we got come on, guys, we got to do something here. The Democrats and the progressives don't want to join at all. That's incredible. We should we should be cutting. We got 500,000 people living on the streets, 100,000 veterans, 78 to uh, about 80 percent, 78 to 80, uh, uh, 80 percent of the people live paycheck to paycheck. 40, uh, 40 percent. Yeah. 40 percent of the American people can't afford a four hundred dollar emergency. We have over 100 million people uninsured or underinsured. Uh, you know, we've got one in five kids, about 30 million children. Uh, it looks like that are in poverty and that go hungry. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Education costs are higher than healthcare costs. Healthcare costs are getting higher. We've got inflation. We've got all these problems in this country. And instead, we're sending billions to Ukraine. Amazing. Now, why would the Republicans want to do this, right? Yeah, I mean, they're Republicans. They should be war hawks, right? Well, there's two reasons. One, uh, it could be that they're tired of sending money to Ukraine. Okay, look. They might want. They might disagree. They might. They might uh, disagree with sending money for to Ukraine for another reason. Like let's send it to another country. But hey, I agree. We should stop sending money to Ukraine. Okay, I, I agree. Fine, I agree with that. However, the other reason is what I just said. The it's and 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 uh, it's a position that uh, the left used to take an anti-war position that the war once that I'm mean, sorry that the left once had. Now the right wing can take this lane because the the left wing ain't doing anything. So there you go. The the right wing is demanding a cut to the military budget, $75 billion. I quite frankly think they can do way more. I think they can do way more. And uh, I really think they should do way more. And it's amazing how right now we have the right wing that's calling for it. Those those that are hold, uh, well, not holdouts. I should stop calling them holdouts. Those that are rebels. And the left wing is just sitting there. Uh, the squad, if, if you, as you will, won't even lift a finger, won't even speak the truth about war in this country and won't join the right, the right wing uh, rebels uh, and fighters in demanding a cut to any war spending or military, uh, military funding.